With 1.13 here, it's time to upgrade. Hello everybody and welcome back to MindTech with me, Carburetor. Today we are going to be looking at my updated version of the Potion Brewing Station for 1.13.2. Now, I don't intend on doing one of these for every single time that there's an update, but if there's a major update, like I know they're going to be adding a lot more for 1.14, I'm just going to do a quick update just so you guys can see how I've updated this platform to work with the new systems. Now, in about i want to say about six or seven months ago now i did an episode where three automatic brewing stations where i had a gigantic what i like to call the billboard i have this one which i call the smart version and then i had one which just produced just one potion that was it out of all of them this is my favorite because it it's the easiest to use in my opinion it's not that much more uh, expensive to build than the other ones so it's just a very nice compromise now let's go over some of the changes first off i had to add the turtle master and the slow falling i believe i can't remember what two were in here before i'd have to look back at my other video but these are now added into it I've also decided to get rid of the redstone element for the potion of weakness just because of the fact that it was unnecessary when we have this redstone component right down here. Kind of like why do we need it? If you're just splashing uh if you're just splashing villagers to convert them to zombies, you don't really need it. Now, I really like what I've done here with the turtle master in that I've also routed a hopper up above to put the uh, to keep it stocked up because turtle ma or turtle shells are not um, are not not self store or not um, God what's the word I'm looking for I'm sorry I'm totally spacing out they aren't stack it they aren't stackable even on a 16 level like some oops it's getting dark here so I might have to wrap up this take right quick but Otherwise, it's relatively unchanged, but I'm still going to show you guys how to make it. So for this, you're going to need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 deep. So let's start by putting that down. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space here. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then go ahead and make it 4 high as well. Just a solid wall across it. This is really easy when you don't need to constantly run back and forth for uh, parts to a main build. So this shouldn't take too long. But then we have 12 redstone torches going across the top. So you want to skip the first two and then just go ahead and put them lining the wall down below. And then you want to put four down here. I'm going to go ahead and just work from the bottom now up. Put down my four repeaters right there. Put down droppers facing up. And, oh, I totally biffed that, sorry. You need to put down four blocks and then put the droppers on top of it. Next, what I want you guys to do is go along and place droppers in like this underneath all the torches. Or, it doesn't need to be droppers, but you need to be able to space them out by one away from the wall. Otherwise, it won't work properly. And then go ahead and place the droppers <laughs> up like this. And you can just place them on top of the redstone torches. That way, they, don't, uh, they aren't going anywhere. Next, and this is by strict preference, I always put these droppers up here facing downwards like this. Now you can use hoppers up here, but hoppers are expensive. Droppers are relatively cheap and you can go ahead and knock those two out. That was just to make it easier to build. Next, you wanna grab your hoppers and you basically just wanna feed them straight down like this. For now, let's just plumb them like this. And I really love this dual element of using the um, 
using the same hoppers for these droppers as well down here. It's just sort of a way to save a little bit of time and money. Next, we're just going to want to go ahead, knock out this area right here, and then go ahead and put in our brewing stand. And I, I do realize I'm, st I'm cutting back and forth a lot, and it's mainly just because it's easier to make sure that I'm showing you guys the right way to do this. Now, I do... I learned to integrate the chest for the blaze powder. Now, this is not that big of a deal. If you don't need a huge farm, you can go ahead, or a, not necessarily a huge farm, but a farm that you guys are going to be using all the time, you can go ahead and knock this element out of it. But I kept this element in it simply because of the fact that on Exuma's LPMT series, where I recently built one of these, I'm assuming that a lot of people are going to use the, this. And it's the same with over here. You want to run the hopper line, stopping uh, one before the redstone torch. We want to make sure that we don't corrupt the uh, hopper, for lack of better words. We also want to make sure that, that hopper is actually going into there. I don't know if I did it before. Next, just go ahead and add the chests that are going to be for the water bottles. And again, I'm adding more chests for water bottles this time, simply because of the fact that on Exuma's LPMT series where I recently made this, I'm, I need a lot of storage. After that, believe it or not, the basics are all done. After that, all we need to do is add the finer elements. Go ahead and put buttons all along the top, buttons all along the bottom, and then take... I don't know why I grabbed stripped logs there. Uh, item frames. And that basically, you can use signs if you want, but I really like the way that, um, I really like the way that the item frames look just because of the fact that again, makes it easy to work with. It makes it very easy to to readily select what you need uh, versus having to look everything up. But it also makes it a little bit more fun, makes it a little bit more catchy, and to tell the truth, I really like the way that this red nether brick looks as compared to the nether work blocks. I might end up changing my design from the other one to this because it just looks so snazzy. But anyway, I'm going to finish putting all these in, and then we can go over how the brewing works in the modern 1.13 update. I totally forgot something, actually. For the Turtle Master, you want to find which one you're going to be making into a Turtle Master. For this, I decided to just leave it on the list, and I'll show you the list in a little while where it is. But I made it so that the list goes down all the way, and that's all that you really need to do. Now, I did try and put it right here. The problem with that is, is that then this redstone torch locks out the hopper. So it's better and easier, in my opinion, to just leave it up like this. And I always like to put that little extra hopper there just because it adds a little bit more storage. Only five slots, I understand, but something is better than nothing. So now that I have everything in, what you basically can do is gather these up over time and slowly fill in these items. Now, what I've done with this is I've taken the nether warts and I've put them in the bottom. And then that makes it so that it hits the dropper first. And then after that, because the item or the ingredients are then on top, which I'm not going to go through and put them all in, but because the ingredients are in t on top they get shot into this dropper which take a little bit longer to get into the hopper and basically stack them up so the nether work goes in first and then let's pick a random one then gas tears go in so it stacks it in the way of which the brewing stand takes it in now if the gas tears or the sugar or whatever go in first it makes an awkward potion and basically makes it worthless so you really want to be careful when you're making these also to avoid areas of lag because you don't want it to lag out and ruin ingredients on you. The uh, hopper from the side feeds blaze powder into here. The hopper from the side over here feeds water bottles automatically into here. If I remove one, you can see it automatically gets restocked up. So that's always very nifty to have. 
Now, there is an outlier here also, and that's the Fermented Spider Eye. The Fermented Spider Eye does not need Nether Wart. That's why there's no Nether Wart in it. Now, like I said before, though, on my other design, I had Redstone up here to automatically shoot Redstone into it just to make it a little bit better, which when we go into Gamepedia to show you guys the updated chart that has been recently uploaded, you guys can see what I mean. But anyway that's the basics of it all done and like I said you don't need to go through and you don't need to fill this all up to the brim overnight like let's say you only have five gas tiers that's fine only put five gas tiers in there the worst thing that could happen is you press the button you don't have gas tiers and you just made a partial potion oops you know not that big of a deal you've wasted a couple water bottles again just not that big a deal so you don't need to fill it up all overnight but just slowly start adding these in now let's head over to gamepedia so i can show you guys the basics on the 1.13 brewing so as you guys can see this is a new updated 1.13 brewing chart that is on gamepedia all that i do is i google brewing in minecraft and it pulls this up you can see brewing minecraft go here i click on I click on the image it pulls up the image click it again and it can bring it up and you can zoom in to see everything now as this as I can walk through here this shows where the nether work goes in and it also shows oh it's not an awkward potion it's a mundane potion it's an awkward potion where the nether work goes into it my bad I I misspoke there but as you can see down here the potion of weakness if you just use the plain old uh, uh, fermented spider eye it makes it for a minute 30 if you add the redstone it adds uh, it makes up to four minutes but you can go through here and you can really see everything and you'll notice that on there also I labeled fermented spider eye as a corruptor that's because it turns like potion of swiftness to potion of slowing it turns potion of leaping into potion of slowness it turns healing into harming same with poison into harming which seems kind of weird because they're both the same they're both kind of like Potion of Harming. And then it turns Potion of Night Vision into Potion of Invisibility, where again, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it just changes it. It corrupts it, for lack of better words. There's not too many that you actually like uh, can corrupt. There's only a few out there. But every single potion you see basically has the option of adding Redstone or Glowstone. The only ones that you really can't add Goldstone to are Potion of Weakness, Potion of Night Vision, potion of water breathing fire resistance and that's it but you can't add redstone to potion of healing or harming it basically negates it but it does the adding the glowstone does help you there and as you can see these are all of the basics and i would recommend you guys go in and actually read the gamepedia because there is a lot of very useful elements to use in all of this i'm constantly looking at this thing even when i am using the automatic brewing station just because it's so finicky brewing is honestly one of the hardest things out here and this brewing stand of mine just makes it easier well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button. If you really liked it, please make sure to subscribe. As always, feel free to leave me video ideas in the comment section. I'm more than willing to take them in. I'm sorry that this didn't come out yesterday. I know this is going to be coming out on Saturday the 26th. It was supposed to release on the 25th, but I had three days in a row where I worked 14-hour days at work. It's going to be awesome on my paycheck, but it meant that I kind of ran out of time. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode like I said already, and I will see you all next week.